So one of the things that I get to do and have gotten to do over the last 10 years is to visit some pretty incredible places where amazing work is done. And about seven or eight years ago, I got to go to Boulder to be a mentor at the Unreasonable Institute with this particular class of entrepreneurs who were there. And I got to meet an amazing man, Luis Duarte. Luis at the time was working in recycling garbage in Mexico and being someone who can pivot and move on. He is now uh, head of the Gary Community Investments focusing on early childhood education. And I had a great moment backstage when I got to say to uh, him, welcome my green card friend and had everyone look at me like, what kind of political incorrectness did she just step into? But I just want to tell you, I want to welcome Luis Duarte, my green card friend, to the stage, and he'll tell you why. Thank you, Rosalie. And um, I think, first of all, it's, it's really a pleasure. I'm not the head of Gary Community Investment. We have a ton of beautiful um, colleagues that are representing our organization, but I do uh, love coming to SOCA. This is home. The first SOCA that I came in, thanks to Tony Carr, was in 2012. And um, I have been since um, introduced to Gary Community Investments, thanks to Tyler Harton and Jed Emerson. And Gary Community Investments, which includes the Piton Foundation, invests in for-profit and philanthropic opportunities to help advance the lives of low-income children and their families in the state of Colorado. So last year, a group of us that were here, as we were heading back home in Denver, um, we wondered about this question. And the question is, how might we leverage this community? How might we leverage SOCAP and show each of the participants, each of you, the correlation between early childhood social determinants of health, economic development, neighborhood economics, and also sustainable livelihoods. And also share with you the incredible financial and social return on investment when you're looking at this field to make a commitment. Thanks to Rosalie, Kevin Jones, Lindsay Smelling, and Kerry Hansen, Gary Community Investments has been working this whole year to curate the first Early Childhood Spotlight series. We're very excited to bring you not only our hashtag, SOCAP for Kids, but also to announce a one million early childhood innovation prize to really unearth solutions that will help improve the lives of children zero to three. And what better way to start this Spotlight series than with our next speaker? I'm truly honored to introduce and welcome to this home, to this community, Dr. Satya Nita. Dr. Nita is the worldwide leader and program director of the Cognitive Sciences and Education, Technology, and Research Department at IBM Watson. His global team invests and develops technologies at the intersection of cognitive neuroscience and cognitive computing and employs multiple techniques in fields that are ranging from machine learning to natural, process, um, natural language processing, virtual and augmented reality, to cognitive neuroscience. He has been the chief technologist behind several critical innovations in the silicon technology area. Dr. Nita has been honored with multiple awards, including the IEEE Spectrum Innovator of the Year. And in 2016, he was choice, chosen as one of the top 50 worldwide innovators, movers and shakers of education by the, by the World Innovation Summit. Aside of his incredible credentials, I was so touched, inspired, and humbled to hear his personal journey. Please join me in welcoming Sadia. Hello. Good morning. It's a pleasure and honor to be here. And uh, I'll blame Luis for spending the first uh, two or three minutes of my talk giving you a little bit of a background uh, behind uh, my journey into early childhood. So, so there's something called the, the Star Trek phenomena. It's actually very well known amongst uh, technologists, which is that 
uh, at a very early age, uh, a lot of children get exposed to uh, TV shows like Star Trek or to science fiction, and uh, they're so inspired by it, they grow up uh, dreaming of uh, building this world that they see. Uh, so I was very much one of those people. I spent uh, a good part of my teenage years reading nothing but science fiction and, and sinking in as much astronomy and astrophysics as I could. And, uh, and that translated to spending most of my uh, professional life uh, working in uh, nanoelectronics and nanomaterials and uh, working on silicon technologies. So how did I end up in early childhood? So the story is, um, you know, IBM uh, you know, takes people like me and gives us all kinds of uh, exposures. And one year, they asked me to spend a year uh, shadowing the, uh, one of the senior leaders of the company because they wanted me to learn how to run big organizations and manage large budgets. So I spent a year doing that. And at the end of it, they said, what do you want to do next? And uh, so I'd spent the last several years with a, with a real fascination for a branch of computing called neuromorphic computing. And uh, which is this notion that uh, digital computers look very different from the human brain, and there is a reason for the difference, and how do we bridge this gap? So I got very interested in that field and realized I wanted to spend some time pursuing uh, the software side of things and got into AI. So when I landed in AI, I had to find an application area to work in, and uh, Watson had just won Jeopardy. And uh, about a year later, they were looking for somebody to start a, a team uh, trying to figure out what to do with Watson in education. So I, I was inspired by the fact that there was a big idea behind this whole thing, just like uh, there was a big idea behind the, uh, the, the technologies that I spent uh, doing my, my earlier work in. And uh, I decided to take up the, the challenge and the opportunity. So the big idea here is that you know, computing is evolving rapidly. A lot of young children are exposed to experiences that we have never seen. And, uh, and I was fascinated by what things like touch computing or interaction with a virtual agent uh, will do to how uh, my children and this generation uh, will, will learn and how their brains will be wired and how they'll be different from us and think very differently from us. Uh, so I loved that big idea. And I said, OK, I do want to spend the rest of my uh, time in AI uh, doing uh, early childhood education. Uh, so back here is actually an image of uh, uh, Saturn. This was taken by the Cassini spacecraft uh, three days before it actually plunged into Saturn. And uh, so this ideas like this, I mean, images like this still inspire me. I showed this to my children. They were captivated by it. So it made sense to me that you know, uh, bridging big ideas and technology and trying to transform early childhood education was where I should spend uh, the rest of my time. But what really changed uh, things for me was a talk that I saw by Patricia Cole. Uh, it was an inspirational talk. She's a very famous researcher in this area. And uh, she had a lot of things to say about uh, brain development and growth. Uh, but one of the things that she said that stayed with me is uh, the, the rapidity of brain growth in the first five years of life and the investment in public education that happens. So right at the point where the brain is going through the most important and dramatic period of growth, we have very, very little investment in uh, public spend in education. And, uh, and this is a real pity, because everything we see with respect to uh, people dropping out of schools, colleges, having poor life experiences, uh, can be traced down to this exact uh, period, uh, where there is neglect, there's poor nutrition, very, uh, very few learning experiences. And so this got me really, really interested in the problem. And uh, then, as I was reading the literature, I came across this paper from uh, John Gabrieli's group at MIT, uh, where he talks about uh, the actual physical impact of neglect uh, in the early childhood uh, time frame on uh, children's brains. And he talks about the, uh, the difference in the thickness of the cortical sheet in the neocortex, uh, depending on you know, which, uh, what kind of background you come from. And, uh, and this absolutely stunned me. So there is an actual physical change in the brain and a physical uh, lack of uh, brain growth that you can measure uh, through fMRI uh, in early childhood. So, so this got us thinking a little bit about what can we do with technology? Can technology help level the playing field? Uh, can we do something uh, to actually address this gap? And we sought out a partnership uh, with Sesame Workshop, who is, of course, well known for a tremendous amount of work in early childhood and uh, delighting 
generations of children and uh, teaching them words and concepts and so on. Uh, so Sesame was delighted to work with us, and, uh, and so when we formed the partnership, uh, we had a couple of principles. The first was uh, we realized that uh, despite IBM and Sesame being very big names, uh, we realized that we're just a drop in the bucket. And to make a difference in such a big field across the globe, uh, we, we need an entire community of people to come together. Um, so we said, uh, you know, one of the things we ought to do just by partnering together is to draw attention to this field and shine a spotlight on this field. And the second thing we ought to do is to figure out how to use AI uh, to transform this particular uh, field. And it's a very interesting time in AI, as, as all of you know. Uh, the notion that I can uh, dialogue with a computer, that a computer can understand natural language, uh, that a computer can understand speech and vision, uh, and uh, take some decisions and, uh, and reason. Uh, all of these things are at the frontiers of AI today, and which is what we were doing in our day-to-day -day life. So we thought partnering together and using these capabilities uh, and, and uh, doing something that will, uh, first of all, shine a light on the problem, and second, enable uh, a lot of people in the, in the field to, to build their own technologies would be the right thing to do. So what we, what we decided to do was to build a platform uh, to impact early childhood learning. And, uh, and this platform would be basically used to create a generation of uh, smart apps and toys and games and so on. And uh, so this is a software platform. It's still in development. Uh, but we decided that the platform was basically the way to enable an entire ecosystem of, uh, of people who don't otherwise have the means and the mechanisms to use AI uh, to create their own technologies and, and impact the space. So I want to talk briefly about what the platform does. So first of all, we started with uh, the core Watson technology itself. And Watson technologies today uh, involve things like speech and image recognition, uh, conversation between a computer and a human, uh, the notion of uh, many dynamic types of character voices. So these are all the base foundational elements of the platform. And when we looked at it, we realized that uh, none of the technologies actually work for early childhood. Uh, first of all, understanding children's speech is very difficult for a computer. It's a unique problem. Uh, having meaningful conversations with children is very different from a uh, chatbot answering questions for a call center. So we spent a fair bit of time, the first year of our partnership, uh, tweaking uh, the underlying Watson technologies and creating a more robust platform for early childhood. And then we said we can do something a little bit more ambitious. And we started building a series of custom uh, AI, uh, AI services, as we call them, uh, for early childhood, and which is the layer that's on top. So what we started building was a network of all the concepts in early childhood. We started feeding what's in all kinds of literature uh, that children normally read. So we have an idea of the concepts, the vocabulary, the words that they have. And, uh, and this is semi-autonomously -auto generating this entire knowledge graph of early childhood concepts. And uh, using that, uh, we could do some very interesting things. We could, uh, we could have a computer generate assessments. We could have a computer uh, generate personalization models. And, uh, and so this platform then uh, was basically the foundation by which we could start building technologies ourselves just to test it out. So the first technology uh, that we built was a learning application. Uh, this is a vocabulary learning application to address the, uh, the well-known 30 million word gap that, uh, that all the people in this community really understand. Um, and uh, so we started piloting this. We piloted this at a very large school district in Georgia at uh, Gwinnett County Public Schools. And, uh, and this uh, slide, you see the, the relationships a little bit better. So based on that, we started getting some real, uh, really interesting data. For instance, uh, the, the graph um, at the bottom left is basically uh, uh, the, the vocabulary development for one particular child over a 15-day, 10, 15-day period of being exposed to uh, the, uh, the learning experiences that are built within this app. And the larger circles represent more confidence in the word. The smaller circles represent less confidence in the word. And you can actually see a kindergarten age child actually grasping words as they go through and use this uh, uh, particular application. Among other things, uh, the application can also generate assessments based on the, the knowledge graph that you see below. It will ask a question like, uh, which of the following mammals is capable of flying? And it will also generate automatically all kinds of distractors, and it will have this 
very conversational interface with, uh, with children. We mean this application to be an exemplar application of the platform. We don't intend for this to be the only application that children will use. And uh, so among other things, uh, we also thought it would be interesting uh, to uh, use the platform to power a generation of smart toys, uh, which can have very interesting conversations with children. And, uh, and among other things, they can also situate the conversations within their surroundings. Uh, for instance, uh, the toys might be able to look at a child's surroundings, and they might be uh, able to have a conversation based on the characters that they see or the objects or the toys that they see. Uh, and all of these are enabled by computer vision and speech recognition and, uh, and, and the network of concepts that we're building. So these are meant to be some example applications of uh, what one could build with the platform, but what we really intended was uh, over the next year or so to open this up to the world and let people uh, build uh, their own uh, learning applications and, and tackle major problems like dyslexia, uh, which is a possible future application, and, and unleash kind of the innovative power of, uh, of an entire community. Uh, dyslexia is a great example of what one could do with a platform like this. It's very well known today that uh, dyslexia is actually really uh, a, a problem in the phonological processing areas of the brain and the ability to distinguish sounds is also very critical to the ability to read. So you could use uh, speech recognition, which is built on understanding phonemes uh, in very clever ways to, to address uh, problems like dyslexia. So I want to end with, uh, uh, with a little bit of a call to action. Uh, I'm very humbled to be here, very honored to be here uh, amongst a network of uh, you know, uh, influencers, financiers, et cetera. I would like all of you to consider investing in this area um, and uh, consider uh, you know, investing in, in technologies and people who can scale uh, the, the problem, uh, scale, the, scale their uh, reach, and, and allow many more children on the globe uh, the opportunity to grow up and dream of uh, uh, stars and reach for the stars. Thank you so much.